creationists are the ultimate skeptics. They will believe in men being raised from the dead and talking to ghosts that can impregnate virgins without even a shred of evidence, but when confronted with the evidence for biological evolution, they transform into staunch critics upholding the highest burdens of proof ever constructed. The theory of evolution is actually supported with a wide variety of evidence. Evolution is right up there with the basic principles of elementary physics in terms of observational support. In the face of such overwhelming evidence, critics adopt standards of such unreasonableness that virtually nothing could be considered true if we applied such standards across all areas of inquiry and knowledge. The creationist argument is based on selectively raising standards. If other proposed ideas were supported by evidence to the degree that biological evolution is, creationists would certainly not doubt these ideas. For example, the theory of gravity and the atomic theory. However, the theory of evolution is fair game for doubt, because creationists selectively demand implausible degrees of evidence for its truth, and won't accept anything less. Common creationist arguments that utilize this tactic are numerous. For instance, they often make the following claims. There aren't that many transitional fossils. Scientists should have found more. Scientists can't explain in full detail how life first arose or how sex evolved. Scientific claims are provisional and always subject to disproof. Why should we believe in evolution if it could be wrong? Macroevolution that produces grand and complex changes has never been observed. They make these statements even in the face of mounds of evidence, like the complete set of transitional fossils from a fox-like creature to the modern-day horse. Notice how these facts could only truly be considered criticisms of evolutionary theory if we expected complete and total mathematical proof for biological evolution. The problem, of course, is that empirical sciences do not deal with formal proofs of absolute certainty. They must instead rely on evidence and probability, like much of our everyday knowledge. In normal scenarios, creationists do not have such high standards of proof. If, for instance, they found a half-eaten deer carcass surrounded by wolf paw prints, the reasonable conclusion is that the wolves ate the deer. If subsequently they found wolves nearby covered in deer blood, and analyzed the vomit of one wolf and found that it contained deer meat, that would be further evidence in support of the rather obvious conclusion that the wolves ate the deer in question. Now, if some wolf-loving skeptic wanted to protect the wolves from this charge of murder, he could adopt the creationist strategy and utilize unreasonable high standards of proof to shield him from criticism. He could argue, for instance, that because no one observed the wolf eating the deer, we could doubt the conclusion. For the skeptic, all the evidence pointing towards the wolves means nothing to him if we cannot directly observe the event in question. He could also remark that the wolf theory leaves out certain details. For instance, it doesn't tell us exactly how many wolves were involved, or whether the wolves first attacked from the left side or the right side, or whether the deer happened to be looking down at its feet when the attack occurred. They could argue that deer are faster than wolves, so it's impossible. The skeptic could argue that these gaps in the theory rule out the wolf hypothesis. Of course, any reasonable person can see that the wolf skeptic sets his standards of proof way too high. We need not directly observe the event nor explain every trite and inane detail in order to know that the wolves did indeed eat the deer. The evidence of the eaten deer carcass, the wolf paw prints, and the blood splattered wolves, the deer meat and the vomit, and so on, all show without a doubt that the deer was eaten by the wolves. Creationists use almost the exact same sort of arguments against evolution. When they argue that huge biological changes resulting from evolution have never been observed, they do not realize that scientists need not directly observe single-celled organisms becoming primates in order to reasonably conclude that such an event occurred, just as those who believe that the wolves ate the deer do not need to directly observe the event to know that it truly happened, given the abundance of evidence supporting the claim. 
When creationists argue that there are gaps in the fossil record, they fail to realize that geology predicts such gaps, and it's hardly reasonable to expect every species that ever lived to become fossilized. They also fail to realize that the few transitional forms that have been found are solid evidence for evolution. If, for instance, one could not find the paw prints of one particular blood-covered wolf, it wouldn't necessarily indicate that the other wolves whose paw prints were found did not eat the deer. The missing paw print of one wolf is not evidence that he didn't eat, because the more plausible explanation, given the evidence of his blood-covered fur, is that he ate the deer, but perhaps did not leave any prints, or that his prints were destroyed by the other wolves walking over them. The creationist criticism that scientists cannot explain a very specific and complex event like the evolution of sex with absolute accuracy and then remarking that this is evidence against evolution is like claiming that because we cannot explain how the wolves caught the deer the wolf scenario must be false. Clearly, such an argument would only hold any force for someone with unreasonable expectations of evidence, who for some reason believe that we must prove everything with complete certainty, even though this sort of accuracy is impossible outside of mathematics. If one adopts this stance of irrational doubt and applies it to any holy book, it's clear that they fall short of this high standard of proof. Indeed, one of the most interesting things about creationists is their ability to have such high standards for something like evolution, while at the same time having virtually no standards of proof for claims about religion, often justifying those beliefs with faith. One would think the creationist would be consistent with his standards of proof, but he sets evolution to such a high standard because he finds its implications inconsistent with his religious worldview. If only the theory of evolution had proven that men were created from dirt by an omnipotent being, perhaps the scientist would have had an easier time convincing the creationists of its truth. Unfortunately, the truth doesn't frequently agree with the stories in holy books, and the only way to truly gain knowledge is through evidence gathering, much to the chagrin of those who support the value of faith. Basic reasoning and skepticism will suffice in debunking most religious claims. One can only imagine how quickly religious beliefs would be debunked if one approached them with the extreme skepticism the likes of which creationists brandish at evolution. We can only hope they apply this skepticism to their religion one day. Actions are more important than beliefs.